In this lecture, we'll be talking about Docker architecture. So we have already discussed about the Docker architecture in our last lecture, where we we're discussing about the Docker containers and how the Docker containers is entirely different from the virtual machine that we always use. So just to recollect once again, you can see that our machine can have a CPU architecture of x66 or x64 or ARM, and it will also have a memory like a RAM, and also it will have a hard disk or PCIe or whatever express that you use. And we'll also have network connectivity within our machine. So we'll have all these in our bare metal machine. And then we will have an operating system installed within that machine. It could be Windows, Linux, or Mac operating system. But on the top, to run the containers, we will have Docker engines. And then it's going to spin up the containers for you, something like this. And that's exactly we saw how the Docker CLI is going to do that from the command line. It sends a REST request to the Docker daemon. And then it's going to spin up the containers for us, something like that. But there are even more processing going on in the Docker daemon, not just like Docker daemon is going to spin up the containers for us, something like this. Rather, the architecture is going to look something like this behind the scene. So this is what happens under the hood while a CLI is going to ask for creating a container or pulling an image and deleting a container. You're going to be going through these many processes. You're going to be sending a request to the Docker daemon and the Docker daemon is going to then call a container D. And this container D is going to call a run C. And this run C is going to call the container runtime. And then it is going to spin up those containers for you, something like this. And this container runtime is going to manage the namespaces and C group, or otherwise called as the control groups, which is going to control the isolation of the containers to be running in their own process so that it won't interfere with another containers. So that's what the namespacing is. And the C group is going to be the control groups, which is going to be used for controlling the resources that is being used within each of these containers by sharing the resource from your operating system as well as from your memory within your machine. So, I mean, this namespace and C groups are something which is coming from the Linux operating system directly, and that's what is being used by the Docker itself. And you can see that there are so many information here like container D and run C. Well, container D is an industry standard container runtime which is a core part of Docker ecosystem right now. And it is now a standalone project as well. And most importantly, this is now a project within the Cloud Native Foundation or CNCF. And it is designed to be a lightweight and robust solution for managing container lifecycle from image transfer and storage of the container execution and supervision. So this container D does quite a lot of things under the hood. And not only that, it does the container lifecycle management, image management, storage and networking, runtime support, eventing and monitoring. So it does quite a lot of different operation. And there's a big story behind this container D. And I will quickly show you on the container D project page in the GitHub. If I just go and search in the Bing over here, you can see that this is this container D.io. And if I go and hit this, you will see that container D is the industry standard container runtime with an emphasis on simplicity, robustness, and portability. So you can see that now this container D is graduated within the CNCF or Cloud Native Computing Foundation project. And it has quite a lot of details over here. And I will just recommend you to just go through how container D works and you can understand the overview and stuff. In a nutshell, container D is a very big project and it is now not only just used in Docker, but also in Kubernetes and other major project for the containerization of the applications. So that's what is the container D is all about. And we have already discussed about it a bit. But most importantly, this container D also acts as an intermediary between the higher level orchestration tools like Docker or Kubernetes and to the lower level container runtime, which is the run C. So we have seen in the architecture that the container D talks to the run C. So run C is also one of the core component in the Docker architecture and it is responsible for running the container process. So this is one of the most important stuff as well. And it is one of the lightweight and portable container runtime that will be used for spawning and running containers on Linux according to the OCI specification. So this is another runtime that you need to understand. And there are many different runtimes available, not just about run C, but you can keep on using many different runtimes if you think so. Just not to go too deep into the architecture, you can see that this is what is happening behind the scene while you call from your command line that, hey, Docker, just create an container from the image which is given, 
then it is going to do all these operations for you. And similarly, if you're going to pull an image from the hub.docker.com, then it is going to do all these operations. So all these are happening for you behind the scene while you perform any action as a simple command from the command line terminal. So hope you got the idea of how the architecture of Docker works. And this is what exactly makes Docker so interesting because this technology is now serving millions and millions of applications running on cloud.